Alrighty guys, I am now in the shop. Uh, actually, uh, yes, you can duplicate it. I tried to press it outside, even with the key on. Some cars, you need power supply going to it. This one you don't. Either way, there is no horn. Now, the horn circuit, fairly simple if you think about it. Okay, when you press this horn pad, all you're doing is closing a circuit, right? Uh, be it ground or power supply. Most likely it's ground, all right? Now, in some cases, in fact, in this case, that circuit is going to travel through what we call a clock spring, okay? Now, from there, uh, it depends on the application, all right? In this case, I want to say it's a 2016 Compass. I think there's a tip on this car. So I want to say this circuit after I put, press this and close the circuit, the ground going to travel through that clock spring and head out to the tip. All right. Now, it may, depending on the features, it may go to the cluster. OK, yes, guys, the cluster is a module itself. CCN. All right. That's a module. It may go through there. I have to see when I look up the diagram, but the horn circuit is fairly uh, simple. It's the simplest circuit on the car, if you ask me. So when it's not working one can always expect it to be easy to diagnose but because this new age stuff everything's running through a module that's what makes it difficult to diagnose so you will in essence need a scan tool to, to diagnose a simple circuit such as a horn yes guys the tip them is on the bus the cluster is on the bus all right now because the tip -um is monitoring the horn circuit you may find fault codes in the tip -um relating to horn but we won't know until we scan it all right now as far as the cluster i'm not sure a horn because it's just a it's just a gateway it's headed through there to get uh bust over to the tip -um. so i press this the horn or the cluster going to get that signal now i should be able to see a horn sense circuit input in the cluster man we're gonna look at all that when i get to the uh when i get to the scan tools or when i get to a computer because if i press this and the cluster see the input then it busts the signal over to the tip them which in turn will send output power supply to the physical horns and from there boop, it's the way it should go that's not happening right now so it's my job to find out why all right y'all ready let's get it i'm gonna plug in my scan tool we're going straight to a computer first guys let's get it all right, guys, here we are. Like I say, it's a 2016 Jeep Compass. Remember, guys, yellow indicates trouble codes in these perspective module, okay? She came in for a horn circuit. A horn is, there's nothing in the CC in the cluster, but there is a fault code in the tip them. Let's take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, on the DTC, yes, you will see, oh, B2338, horn control circuit open. All righty. All right, and guys, look, it's active, meaning it's happening right now. Let's take a look at this, how they expect me to diagnose this thing. Okay, yes, totally integrated. That module is picked up in the tip -um. Okay, here's that so-called simple circuit I was referring to. Look at that. It's not so simple, is it? All right, as I mentioned, I was wrong, guys. Okay, this is the horn switch. When you push that, you're going to close this circuit. Okay, I'm going through the clock spring. So this signal goes through the clock spring. Let me stroll down a little bit. Uh, is that a ground? No, it's going to the cluster. Yep, just as I suspected. Okay, guys. Uh, so let's narrate this. Press the button. I'm going to close this circuit and send that signal to the cluster. From there, once the cluster get the... All right, the customer want to hear the horn once the customer get that input right here and it's gonna bust that signal out where's this bus going these bus wires are going yep you guessed it to the totally integrated power module guys to tip them now from there once the tip them get the input it will send there's two horns it will send likely power supply yeah because you see the symbol right here that represents the ground so the horns are grounded through the frame of the car and the tip them going to send power supply to each horn which means they should blow from there. So one or two things, we're not getting power supply here, or we are getting power supply here and the horn's just not working, all right? So, but I wanna see, like we said in the car, I wanna see this input. Let me go on the, if I press the horn, I should see an input, horn sense 
from the cluster okay let's back out of here guys let's go over to the cluster and see exactly if my suspicions is right here's a cluster right here uh, we're going to go on the data on the data i should see yeah horn on request so technically when i push the horn that should go the same false now it should go true i guess or better yet guys let's take the laptop with me all right so we're gonna go over here because i might need it earlier now the dilemma here is if my battery decides to hold up okay where we at we're showing false right so i'm gonna press the horn pad and see we want to see if this changes all right y'all ready i don't know if y'all can see that or not all right so y'all ready i'm gonna push the horn pad we're looking at uh this input right here that is horn on request let's take a look push see that i push it changed to true so guys technically yeah it changed from false to true so the cluster is getting the input sense data now it's busting that over to the tip them all right so let's go back let's go into the hood and look at something Alrighty, guys typical dual vvt 2.4 liter engine where are they hiding those horns well at any rate guys here are here is the tip one right here there ain't much you can there's no fuse for the horn a lot of people always go in here looking for fuse there's no horn fuse you you saw the wiring diagram there's nothing protecting there's something protecting it but it's uh internal guys so i don't know where they hiding the horn at guys it might be under the car because what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to jump straight to the easy task here's what i mean by easy task here's what you can do guys if you're faced with this because you really want to we diagnose quick guys we're living in a fast-paced environment right here's what you can do to avoid all of this out the scan tool you don't even I mean you need a scan tool but just say you don't have one here's what you can do we just went over the politics of the system right of the circuit right now let's let's disregard all that for a minute let's think about what happens when a horn is designed to work you push the button whatever feeds the horn sends 12 volts to the physical horns wherever they at from there the horn should blow all right let's so let's cut out all the preliminary let's go straight to the horn and i'm gonna grab a test light and we're gonna put on the horn connector and we're gonna push the button and see if i get 12 volts or not if i don't i have some more diagnosing to do if i do get 12 volts at the connector it's fairly simple guys it's your physical horns are at fault all right that's how simple a horn circuit is until they start adding modules clusters all this stuff guys oh my goodness i can go on for days talking about this let's get this car in the air and see and go to the next step hold tight oh righty guys i have the car in the air ladies and gentlemen i have no idea where uh-oh that go one right there guys that is exactly what i'm looking for all right so let me explain to y'all what i'm about to do i'm about to unplug the connector and i'm gonna stick a test light on there like i said earlier we're gonna see if it lights all right so i gotta dig in here guys y'all bear with me let me see i'm gonna go fishing for a minute and voila all right look to connect over real good make sure it's not corroded okay so i'm gonna set that somewhere because i need to i have my test light here uh what we gonna do i have my test light set the ground so now i really need a helper but i guess i'm a one-man operation right now so yeah it's, it's not gonna light now hopefully what we're looking for to see if it's if this test light light when i press the horn pad that means it's a closed circuit that means the circuit is complete it's just the physical parts not doing what it's supposed to do all right so let me see if i can route this test light to where it's set up here hold tight all right guys i had to take the wheel off now i got the test light position and it's ground somewhere on one of these suspension parts and i have it stay up inside the horn connector so let me position myself to press the horn pad if i had a helper i can do this would be a one shot all right so i'm gonna press the horn pad and let y'all look at the test light you know all we trying to do is see if the circuit is complete y'all ready i am pressing the test the horn pad right about now hey again 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 so this is me just physically 
pressing the horn. I'm closing the circuit is all I'm doing. So that tells me, guys, this complete circuit, well, this circuit is complete. What's wrong with why this horn is not blowing is because the horn is physically bad, internal. All right. Now, which begs the question, guys, uh, y'all know me. I'm one of those guys that things have to make sense, right? How in the hell or how in the world do the tempum know that the physicality of the horn is not blowing? All right. I can understand a module being able to verify if a circuit is complete. But it's only one wire going to this horn, right? Think about this for a second. That's what I say, man. Things gotta. Computers are so tricky; it can just make you think, just make you <laughs> your rational thinking change. Like, how the hell do the tip them know that the physical horn is not blowing? All the computer, all the tip them job is just do is to send the twelve volts out via this wire. Twelve volts go to the horn, and the horn blows. That's happening. The 12 volts is going to it. So where do the fault code generate from? Y'all see where I'm going with this? Uh, some things are just unexplainable, guys. And I'm a, I am like to know this stuff. So what? I, there's no return wire on the horn to let the computer know, yes, the circuit is complete. So how, how was the fault code generated in this tip? -off? Not the cluster. There was no codes in the cluster, remember? That was a code in the tip of for horn. And how does it know that the physical horn is not blowing? Now, there's two horns on this car. We only test one. But that's all I need to test. Uh, which begs the question, can both horns be open? Or, which begs the question, if one horn is open, will they both? Let's go back to this wiring diagram, guys. This is bothering me. Hold tight. All right, guys. We're back at the computer. That is the name of the code. Horn circuit control circuit right the control circuit is open the control circuit is complete i don't understand and it's active guys so it can physically see and i have it unplugged so i guess if it doesn't i guess there's a resistor inside the horn yes okay maybe that's it guys there's a small resistor inside of the physical horn okay if it doesn't see any kind of resistance at all it would deem the circuit open okay so here's my like i say here's my tip them here's the wires going out to the horn these two right here so there's the ground at the physical horn yes okay terminal resistor i don't know all right that's that's how it can tell if the circuit is open if the horns are internal open that was set that code of horn circuit open all right guys it's making a little sense all right it's just <laughs> all right okay uh now it's starting to make sense but uh guys that's our problem we have a bad horn uh I, i'm gonna write up both horns all right i got 12 volts going to it the ground is the physical horn now what we didn't do is physically check the horns for ground if it hasn't been moved and it's bolted to the frame chances are the ground is complete all right so i'm writing up two horns and uh we're gonna go from there guys that's all i have uh horns are pretty easy circuit pretty easy but it can be a little complex so as you just saw in this video so we'll see that's all i have guys thanks for watching